Hello, and welcome to another retrospective on a silly video I made. I am joined, as always, by the inimitable Patrick Scahill. That is me. Hello, everybody. I'm Paul Germini, and I, yeah, I guess I am the creator of this, this thing. Um, you know, I've informally referred to it as the Green Screen Project. Um, if you are familiar with my work, you might recognize the similarity to the last project I did, April 15th, 2019. So, I mean, that project was filmed with Mr. Scahill, of course. Just a uh, sort of snapshot of a day in the life, and that was all live action. We put anime into it, and I thought, well, I can just reverse it, and we can we can use anime and put live action into it. And so that's how this project came about. Um, hopefully it's enjoyable. So, so what is the purpose of this uh, meandering intro? So I am going to go through this project and talk about why I did what I did and how everything works. And hopefully it will serve as a tutorial for people who are interested in making something like this. And maybe it'll be entertaining or maybe it'll be very boring. And I know... Um, we did this for the last project, and it secured a record 50 views on my channel. So, ooh, yeah, hopefully we can hit that elusive plus 50 number. 52, you're saying? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I'd be happy with 52, but I shoot for the stars, you know, 53. Yeah. I wish I knew a, a a funny number past 50, but there are none. <laughs> there are none. There okay, are no so, funny numbers there. So some some interesting stats on this so you know this is primarily done for anime boston right and they have a strict sort of i don't know how strictly they enforce it but they specify certain boundaries on what does and does not make an amv so 75 percent of the content has to be set to music and 75 percent of the content has to have anime in it so if you have a and i'll pull up the the stats i the notes i kept track on this Right, so this is exactly five minutes, so there's 300 seconds in five minutes. And so there's music playing for 227 seconds. So that's 75.6% music. So I basically need to have anime almost whenever music is playing so that I can hit that 75% threshold. So it sort of limits what we can do with the live action, right? Because we can only have about 75 seconds of live action. So that needs to cover sort of the setup in the beginning and the outro at the end. And it's sort of a narrow box to hit, if that makes sense. Yeah, these, t th these uh, restrictions got you in trouble on an earlier project, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, you know, I, uh, for, a for April 15th, I, I feel like I had a good case that it was an AMV. You know, there's... I, I feel there's more anime footage in there than live action footage, but uh, you know I'm not in charge of the contest, so I pleaded my case and it was unsuccessful. Yeah, it felt like a somewhat arbitrary ruling. <laughs> I, I'm not sure why they couldn't give it to you there. But you know, as you know, I'm uh, I'm a finalist in the other category for this video this year, so I. Either I wore them down, or this video yeah. <laughs> is different enough from that project. Well, you know, a lot. Of, it reminds me of like uh, the advice they always give you is to submit to Sundance, even when your films aren't good, because they keep track of how often you submit, and they just kind of look at you differently when you're in like five, six projects, because then they know like, oh, this person serious about doing this. Yeah, I hope that's their impressions. I suspect. I suspect it might be more dread on their end, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we start with this, right? Uh, which is your face. If you remember from the April 15th project, you played my boss. And yeah, so it's a sort of a, a spiritual sequel in a way. <laughs> so it's interesting now that you're reversing the relationship of anime and live action in that process. Yeah, and, you know, before we were in person, and now we are sort of virtual. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel being part of my cinematic universe? You know what? I've, I've kind of let it go to my head a little bit. <laughs> this, this tiny amount of power and fame. Uh, yeah, and you, you've got a nice suit. Not the red suit, but... 
No, I did. It's a, that's not a, like a suit a boss would wear, you know. Yeah, that's a good point. Did you did you do any preparation for the role, or you just came in? I watched the old video and was like, mm. "What was this character? What, what was his motivations? What did he need out of life?" And he needed Paul Jeremini to do a good job. <laughs> Originally, I uh, I'm probably going to get in trouble a lot this video trying to show what we did before, but originally okay no you're not even there so yeah originally i had i was showing clips of the old video to you and then you paused it and then it was just your face and then you fired me yeah uh i think if we had more than five minutes there would be more you could live squeeze action it like in. that but mm -hmm. had to get cut and i also think i think it's probably a big ask to ask people to remember <laughs> <laughs> remember a video two or three years ago it's a deep dive <laughs> you know for fans of my au revoir they probably get it but i think just seeing you know just this just seeing you sort of professionally and then dropping a you're fired on it's very evident sort of what the relationship is right away yeah um you'll also notice i named this meeting paul's performance Oh, there you go. A little annoying to me was how you showed up as student here. I can uh, explain a little. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I'm on the Chapman account uh, for Zoom. You can also see my Gundam collection in the background there. Ooh. Oh, on the on the shelf here? On the shelf underneath the big white and blue box is all my Gundam Blu-rays. Yeah, I'm going to turn off all the audio because I'm going to get in trouble here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so you fired me. Yep. And then I added in the sound right here of uh teams ending a call cuz it didn't get captured. Oh, that. Hmm, it must yeah, tune that out automatically, assuming people don't want that. Yeah, I don't quite know why it did that. Uh so moving on. Right, so then there's a, a clip of me reacting, and this is filmed from my laptop camera. I thought that was captured pretty cool. Uh, I sort of like the lo-fi of it. No, and it's a good contrast with the, with the room I'm in. Mm, you know? Dar darker, dingier, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just uh, my, my poverty existence, apparently. Yes, dusty. <laughs> right, so then, so, you know, the immediate reaction, right? Get the Mountain Dew... You Get do a little Doritos. zoom in there for action. Yeah, I. These are the only two clips I filmed in 4K. Okay, so you could zoom in. Yeah, so I could zoom in. Uh huh. Um. Yeah, I went back and forth a little bit. I feel like maybe it could have been a quicker zoom. Seems a little slow on this end, but I feel like I kept speeding it up and not greatly improving. Yeah, I it, think so. to new audience, I don't know, to, to people who haven't seen it before, it always looks quicker, so you have to kind of find that balance. And yeah, so that's the only 4K shot. <laughs> cup noodles, ooh, baby. Yeah, I, the cup noodles actually, like, I don't actually eat cup noodles that often, but I thought it'd be funny to just have a bunch of cup noodles in the background. I'm pro cup noodle. I yeah. approve. I mean, I like cup noodle, but it's it's not something one should eat every day. <laughs> so then we got me eating Doritos. I'm I'm pretty happy with how much audio capture you get on the ambient, uh, and that's just on the the camera speaker, uh, not speaker microphone. Uh, but I feel like it didn't quite capture how how messy I wanted to convey eating said Doritos. Yeah, you would need like a sound design element to it. Like you couldn't get that all in mic. You'd have to create that in post. Like more crunch. Yeah, you would just get Foley effects in there and just really layer it. Like I just, we were just working on a door closing on something I was working on and there's five different sounds we had to record from five different sources to make it sound like a door closing in a movie. That is i think more budget than this yeah. project has <laughs> yeah exactly yeah for for reference the crew on this project was me and <laughs> i guess you you'll get a you'll get a credit ah and uh chuck gets a credit because he held the camera at one point so oh good for him uh so the audio in the background here is uh 
these are just opening to animes I like, but I did mix it a little so that it sort of sounds like it's coming out of a TV speaker instead of, you know, the crisp, clean audio you get normally. I think that was pretty successful. And that's yeah, I think it works. Yeah, so I did... Right, so we eat the Doritos, then we drink the Mountain Dew, and I think I color corrected this a little bit so that it's a little more orangey. Yeah, so yeah. it looks like the sun's gone down. You've been there all day. But I did try to film it a little later in the day. Yeah. Um, for reference, I'm not a big Mountain Dew fan, and that was made apparent by drinking a lot of Mountain Dew. <laughs> you you should have just filled it with a fake liquid. Yeah, that's true, but I I also hate wasting things. So Well, you have nerd friends get one of their empty Mountain Dew <laughs> liters, <laughs> fill it with water. Mm. Well, good. Yeah, that would have made that would have made more sense than what I did. <laughs> Which is just drink it yeah. straight. No chaser. Well, did the Doritos count as chasing? Looks like you're looks like you're chasing yeah. the Doritos with the Mountain yeah, Dew. Yeah, that's true. So I did that, and then uh, sort of falling asleep. Uh, this I did film later in the day, and yeah. I mm, it doesn't look like I did anything to it. It was later in the day, but I did put one of my lights in here, and I turned down. Uh, I can't remember what it is. I think it's the ISO on the the camera, so that you like if I crank the ISO up, you get more of the more light. More light. Mm-hmm. Right, but it was sort of dark. Um, so you get, uh, yeah, I like the technical terms to describe it, but all this noise. Yeah, it's just, it's just because it has to create data where there isn't necessarily something it can read because of the lack of light. So yeah, it creates noise grain. I think it turned out well. Yeah, it's not, it's, it's, these things aren't too noticeable anyway. Most of the time you have to kind of really look for them. For reference, I don't think I've ever fallen in front, fallen asleep in front of the TV. I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely a, a pro bed sleeper. Uh, right. So you fall asleep, and then, you know, sort of the the logic in the 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 video is I get transported into into anime land, which I think this crowd will understand, but it probably might be difficult for someone who's not into anime to get. I think it's like a not an uncommon dream sequence thing, right? This is sort of how it happens in Wizard of Oz and Click, the Adam Sandler vehicle. <laughs> so, did yeah, maybe I should have put. I think this will be a common refrain, but there'll probably be a lot of second guessing during this retro. <laughs> I wonder if I should have put something in here, maybe like a sound effect or something to. Yeah, some wind chimes or something to let us know we're off to dreamland. Hmm. Anyhow, so the first anime clip is How's Moving Castle, and I definitely envision this. Like, I'd say maybe 60% of the anime clips we'll see are things that I... I remember certain scenes in anime, and I know exactly how to, like, shoot myself into them. And then some of them I had to find anime I liked and figure out places that I would fit in. So this is an example of the former, right? I I definitely imagined waking up here, um, partly because I just liked this shot, and because I think it's sort of you can naturally come up in front of the camera, like it's it's shot. Sort yeah, of your foreground isn't well populated, so you can get this sight gag in. And interestingly enough, this this is definitely one of the earlier shots I did. This is a lot of the live action is mostly chronologically shot, uh, which is a bit unusual, but you know, yeah, whatever well, works for you. I think it's easier for me, just as a one man. And I there's a couple of cool things I liked about this. One is that I actually smartly used the After Effects linking here. Ah, yes, the which, dynamic linking in yeah, Adobe. Which, in the April nineteenth, April 15th video, I did, I would clip things out of After Effects and put them in, in the project, which I, I like more because you can just move everything in Premiere. Um, but there was, you know, it was a lot easier in After Effects to get the green screening 
Yeah. Because After Effects is more powerful. Green mm-hmm. screening tools, so basically had to do everything in After Effects, and it would have been a pain to export and put it into projects. So that's where we led to the linking. And I also fuzzed out the background so that I could draw attention to myself. So I feel very clever about doing. And then yeah, right. And you're yeah, you creating can, a rack focus here. Yeah. And then you can bring it back in. Yeah, focus on me. Uh, you know, pretty advanced move for me, I want to <laughs> say. I'm pretty happy about that. I think you sitting up in the frame the way you do too also sells the waking up in a dream kind right, of yeah, thing. So I, I don't know if you have to worry too much about this transition. I see I what you audiences saying. in 2022 are a bit smarter. <laughs> You know, with the movies coming out, it, it doesn't seem that way. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, this shot, actually pretty difficult because I had to make sure I could catch myself in frame. I didn't go out of my camera's frame, which was a problem that I struggled with. But Right, and here's an example of in Premiere where I could... I had a good enough, good enough green screen that I could um, do it all in Premiere, and it, it looked decent. I did think about yeah one thing I wanted to mention there is some there's some ambient music here and I thought I would put the put the sounds of the castle moving in myself just so I could cut out the music but it's inoffensive enough that I decided to leave it sure right also from house moving castle sort of it's close in timing to when that first scene was it's not exactly the next scene. Mm-hmm. I just liked it because it was, again, sort of very... Um, the camera was sort of just pointing straight on. So I didn't have to... I could shoot straight on as well. Yeah. Right, And you'll notice one of the difficulties in, in this was you need strong lights to get get that good contrast on the green screen so that you can you can key it out. And so a lot of times on my glasses, right, you'll see the the light of my my lights getting reflected. Yeah, yeah, that happens a lot. Yeah, I just decided to live with it. I mean, those are my glasses, and I I guess I could have worn a different pair and like punched out the frames, punched out yeah, the. Yeah, you the could lenses. have done that. Uh, movie movie people actually have to digitally take that stuff out. <laughs> like it's it, it's just a pain in the butt. Yeah, I live with it. Yeah, it's fine. Here's also a good time. I'm going to put a picture in my studio. Well, actually, I suppose I could just show it, right? Um, right, so here's the green screen studio. And you can see there's sort of not a ton of space to maneuver. <laughs> um, and I am surrounded by lights. Uh, originally, I just bought the, the green screens and these, these like photography lights. But that was wholly insufficient. Um, so I had to go back and buy these these LED lamps. Good lights. Yeah, I mean, once mm-hmm. I got once I had the lamps, and once I was doing everything in After Effects, and once I sorted out my camera settings, which I'll put up on the screen here because I don't have them available to me right now, everything sort of was working. And I can show you some of the tests earlier once we get through this, but uh, sort of a long road to get get to it looking good. But I'd see the key, I'd say the key was just the lights, right? So I wake up. Uh, you know, I discover the clicker thing, and the clicker thing is sort of a key concept to get across. In that, that is the tool by which I jump through anime scene to anime scene. Um, I needed some device to do that. I thought about a remote, but I wanted something a little more physical, like it makes a clicking noise. And I did want to convey that it was a limited period of time, right? So if you hold the thing up, you see there's a limited number of clicks. Um, so that was the that was the only thing I thought that could convey all that. Now it's a simple device. I think it works fine. I You're even with this shot set up the geography of where you are with this reverse shot. Right. I I spent a long time trying to find a clicker that actually could click down. Like but all these clickers just click up. So I had to reverse this shot. 
right? <laughs> so that I could get I could get the down click to eighty six. Yeah. Okay. But you know, an efficient solution. Yeah, and you can see how sort of the limitations of my setup on how some of the green doesn't quite get cut right on yeah, sort of that, the edges of my fingers. That's always really hard to do, this green halo effect. That's why people get paid the big bucks to get that out of there. Yeah, you know, good enough for government work. And also, yeah. in a later shot with the clicker, you'll see it reflects some of the green. Some of the green gets keyed out, <laughs> but generally all this stuff it only gets observed by the people doing it, right? It'll happen so quick you won't you won't yeah. even notice. And you, most people outside of Anime Boston are going to watch this on their computers. The screens are much smaller. You get away with a lot more. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, right, so we clicked out. I picked 87 because that's the average age of a U.S. male. Uh, so that's where that number comes from. <laughs> I'm sure you're dying to know that. Yes. Uh then we we click into lane i love lane even though it doesn't make a ton of sense to me <laughs> and then we click over to uh voices of a different distant star i've not heard of that one uh good 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 mecca it's only like okay. 30 minutes it's done by uh i'm gonna butcher his name but he he would go on to do uh your name and oh, other this guy. famous okay. things but he yeah. like animated the whole thing by himself oh jeez. No yeah. wonder it's only 30 minutes. Big work. <laughs> and then I click over to Valkyria Chronicles. I love Valkyria Chronicles. I love the games. I love the anime. I have the art books. I played both PSP games. Uh, both, uh, I played both PC games. Yeah, I love Valkyria Chronicles. I suspect no one else does, but <laughs> this is from that anime. And this shot in particular I really like, right? Because you get the long shot, and then then you can get then you get sort of the reverse shot. Yeah. So Again, you're setting up geography. Mm -hmm. Just really lucky on me. Right? And then, then we look around and just sort of acceptance of the state that we're in. And then the music kicks on, right? Uh, yeah, so how long are we into the movie at this point? So we're, we're 53 seconds in. A bold introduction. Well, if you have five minutes, it's a fifth of the, <laughs> of the thing, right? So you got to be sort of efficient in your storytelling. Yeah, and you got there. Uh, I think here's a good, here's a good part to indicate I'm not an actor, and I definitely discovered how difficult acting was in the course of this work. <laughs> I think in our other our other project, it was sort of easier to act act like, natural, like yourself. Just, yeah, you're just, just going through your day. And I mean, you know, when you go through your day, you don't like run or jump or, or dodge stuff or have yeah. to act concerned or scared. Ideally, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So sort of this project stretches my, my acting bounds and you can see just how limited that is. Um, but I tried to act big when I could because I, I think I couldn't do the subtle stuff, but... We'll see how well I can accomplish Yeah, I mean, you're already in anime dreamland. You might as well go campy with it. Yeah, so we go on to, to Sailor Moon. I like to... So my plan for this was, you know, put an anime that sort of sets the scene. Or put a clip that sets the scene, right? So we see, you know, Sailor Moon pop up. Then, then a couple clips of me, and then switch to another anime. Sort of, I didn't want to go sort of rapid fire where you're, it was just one clip of me in an anime and then we'd have another clip of me in an anime. Sort of wanted to give just a tiny bit of setup. Yeah, you want to feel like you're in their world. I get it. Yeah. Um, so this is actually from the end of the first season. Can't quite remember. So one of the things I did was I kept notes of all the clips I cut out, just in case I had to redo them. So this is Sailor Moon. This is episode 45. And you can see the exact timestamp there. <laughs> um, I like this just because I think any of the clips where I get to do something other than just stand around, where I sort of can react to the environment, yeah. I think is a big win. And you can see how I had to spend some time sort of rotoscoping out those... Yes, Snowflakes, I was just noticing yeah. that uh, on the snow on the ground. That, 
I think I was so familiar with doing that with the last project that it was actually a lot easier. Second this nature time. now, yeah. And I, I'm a lot more familiar with the tools, so I actually made some smarter decisions <laughs> that saved me some time. One of the annoying things, though, is I did this shot, and then I did, yeah, right. I did this shot, and I'm on the other side, just so I can get myself more in frame. Yeah. I think if I were to go back, I'd probably put myself on the left, but I didn't want to cut out more snow again. So, <laughs> so do you yeah, live that's with all your right. past mistakes. You live and you learn, you know? This is me just walking in place, but moving the clip. I yeah. I tried to do some shots where I walked to the side, but it never looked very good. So. Yeah, it can be tough, especially with your limited green yeah, I mean, screen got, environment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you got to walk this way, you get like three steps. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to loop that. Right. And then we've got Queen Barrel here just looking on. And then boom, another clip. So that was, how much time is this? So we go from 53 to, yeah, so about seven seconds, eight seconds. I think that's about standard for all the clips or for all these settings, right? And we're not going to hit 87 or so, but, <laughs> but you know. Yeah. Uh, so this is Rose of Versailles, which is a great anime about a lady who's the palace guard of a French French queen. Uh, there's a live-action movie about it. I'd recommend it. I want to say it came out in the 70s. Anyhow. Um, right, so you'll see the same structure here, right? We're at the parade. We get set up. Then you show me in the crowd, right? And then I, and I wait for my computer to chug along. Yeah. So the, yeah. the After Effects stuff is sort of happening in the background. Yeah. Some more uh, rotoscoping here. Yeah. This was a pretty difficult thing to accomplish because the, like these people stay, these people just move to the side. But I stay in place, so I, I sort of have to line up the. I have yeah, there's a little tracking, tracking you've right? got to do. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I have a 50% success rate with the motion tracking tools in After Effects. <laughs> sometimes it works, and sometimes it just doesn't. It's hard to, hard for me to figure out why, but. Yeah. Um, you can again see some nice rotoscoping on the, uh, the confetti. Oh yeah, yeah! Look yeah. at that. And I, one of your feedbacks I remember was that I wasn't jumping high enough, so I actually moved the clip up a little bit in After Effects just so I could get a sort of giant jump. Yeah, it seems like it's working. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Boom. And then, then we're on to Armored Trooper Votoms, which I like quite a bit. Sort of an early mecha. I want to say, you know, I really should have tracked all the dates on this as we talk about the anime, but <laughs> you'll show just how poorly I remember the history. I want to say it's a contemporary of Gundam, as in it's an 80s anime, but yeah, I can't quite remember. It kind of looks like that, late 80s, late 80s, early 90s. And, you know, I thought for long, like, do I try to animate stuff that I'm holding, or do I just take stuff out of the environment and, like, live actionify it? Like, do I just take things I have? That's ultimately what I went for. I'm not sure it makes the most sense. Yeah. But it was certainly easier than trying to, like, you know, grab images of stuff and put it on and try to, like, manipulate that. Uh, it seems the most expedient solution. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, so I'm helping with them, and then these people get upset. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like this shot a lot because it looks like I'm sitting on the mech, but I'm, you know just on like a cinder block or something yeah All right so then we go to last exile i last exile is like one of my favorite animes of all time it's like one of the first animes i ever watched uh sadly forgotten i think but it was on tech tv i want to say yeah i don't think i'm familiar with it well you should take the time to familiarize yourself with it sure sure uh, yeah, so here's another example of motion tracking, right? The camera's moving, but I have to say the same. You see, I mean, it's mostly there. I guess I'm a little out of sync with it, but... And I'm just trying to get just trying to get an autograph here. Uh, yeah, again, sort of tough to, to figure out if I should have, like, props or not, but, you know, I went with it. And I, I think it definitely helps... 
if you cut these characters out and put me behind it, it sort of adds a lot of of layering to the to the clip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pokemon had to make an appearance. Uh, OG only, Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, if only as a crowd pleaser. Um, <laughs> this is one of the things I clearly imagine doing. And this is an example of the old style, where it would take out the... I think I can... No. How do I do that? Yes. Where I would specifically clip something out and put it on top of me. Um, I feel like it's so much easier to manage it all in Premiere, but anyhow... Um, yeah, but I clearly imagine this happening, and then then me getting blasted off, uh, which is one of the first things I did, and it looks pretty good, I'd say, <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> right, so we got Pokemon. Uh, we have Gunbusters here, which I really like. I don't think of all the clips I use, this is probably the weakest one because it's kind of hard to understand like what's going on here. It's pretty esoteric. If you know Gunbusters, you should recognize it. Because the last episode's all in black and white. And I I wanted to do that, so I, I black and whited myself. Um, Which is a nice touch. Yeah, I like it. But it's sort of... I guess it's hard to understand if you don't know what... <laughs> if you don't know this anime from... I want to say the 90s, but... Um, yeah, so you should. So I, I hope you're taking notes on that side, right? Last Exile. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then Gunbuster. And Gunbusters. Then Armored Trooper, Vote House. And then the Freedom Project, which is sponsored by Cup Noodle. So. Oh. I, I think this one's pretty successful. I am a terrible dancer, as you might know, but it's just oh, sort yeah, of funny. Yeah, there you are. Funny. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think <laughs> sort of fake dancing is. It looks should weird. have put on some tunes for you. Yeah, maybe I should have played the music that was actually playing the scene while I was filming it. <laughs> that might have been a good idea. I think I really like the clip of the character just <laughs> bemused watching. Space Runaway Ideon. Uh, Atomino work. Not so, Gundam, though. Yeah, not Gundam. Ignore the gun cannon-looking thing. This is not Gundam. <laughs> this... I actually use Space Runaway Ideon to to test a lot of the green screen footages. Green screen footage. Um, so this was sort of my test bed. I put a electric leaf blower. Oh, on, wow, like you went stand. all in. Yeah, yeah, just so I could capture the hair blasting. Mm -hmm. And I think the nice thing is... Um, these close-up shots, where it just looks at the the background green screen, yeah, turn out pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's a lot easier. Yeah, it's the the ones where I'm standing and we got to get the top and the the bottom green yeah. screen, which are like <laughs> slightly different green colors. Yeah. Mm, excuse me. Are a little bit harder. Uh, and the annoying thing on some of these old animes is, you can see how the 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 blah blah blah. The sh oh, I can't say it. The Ooh. animation cell is is shifting a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I'm I'm not shifting, so. You know, I wasn't gonna try and sync that up. Yeah, I, I think it's fine. Yeah, if you had a million dollar budget for this. Maybe. I don't even know if they'd want to spend it on that anyway. You yeah, probably maybe. you probably just find a way to keep the cells from shifting, some algorithm or something. Yeah. So I maybe should have bought a bigger cam a better camera with my million dollars, but anyhow, that's cool. I like this shot a lot. Um Nadesco is another show you should watch. And I think this is a pretty good this is actually sort of one of the longer setups. Right, so we see the Nadesco and then Then we go into the kitchen. Well we wait after effects to to load up. Uh, this was one of your your comments. Originally, I was coming in from the left to steal suit. Oh soup, yeah, mm -hmm. right. And that was you know sort of tricky to do, right? Because the soup isn't actually there. Uh, but yeah, but one of your comments was to basically come in from another side, and I think that came out quite well. And yeah, you've just got space over there to fit you in better. I think if this character was actually here, it might. They might see me compared to the other setup, but yeah, 
I think it's okay, just so we can get more of me. Yeah, if it's, we're doing framing over a little narrative logics here. And I did this like four or five times just so I could make sure I got it right. And it's kind of hard on the knees. you got to kneel down and come up. Yeah. Mm. And then fake imagine that there's a, a bowl here you can <laughs> steal soup from. And then make sure you don't like tip the... Yeah, you should have brought your spoon out with a little more, like, slowly, because it's got weight in there now, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Next time. You know, I wonder... I did actually have a bowl that I thought I would try and use, but it was just easier to shoot this way. Sure. Right, and then I get to see uh, Ruri Singh. She's a very popular character from the show. Uh, And that's sort of an extended sequence, and there's a lot of cutting out happening there. Just so that I can fit in. And, you know, whenever I can put a character sort of in front of me or behind me, I try and take that opportunity just so that I can. Shows craftsmanship. Yeah. I think it, you know, it lets the viewer more easily imagine. Yeah. You see, you still got the ladle. Yeah, well, I mean, if I steal the soup, right, and here I'm drinking the yeah, soup. Yeah, you're drinking the soup. You right, got to have the you ladle. You got to keep it. I guess. I think it's probably funnier that I'm, like, rocking along to it instead of just having the ladle in my pocket, but... Yeah. As an aside, this bathrobe I've had since high school, and it's rapidly fallen apart at this... (laughs) At at my... I don't know if you can say rapidly when that's, like, 15 years ago. Yeah. uh, It is uh, ragged, we'll say. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's that. Then we can go on to Gunsmith Cats, great OVA series. Uh, this is a great opportunity to show off my amazing gun collection. <laughs> uh, right, so gun- the in in universe, Gunsmith Cats is there. They own like a gun shop somewhere in America. I can't remember where. Maybe it's Detroit. Anyhow, right. So I thought it was a good opportunity to show some of the pieces in my collection. Um, you can see right. I start out with this is a number one Mark III star, Lee Enfield. Right. And then um, I picked all the ones I had bayonets for, just because I thought it would look funnier. Right, and then I have uh, a Yugoslavian SKS here, which I'm playing with the bayonet in the background. And then, yeah, cut to her. Right, then this guy's going to... Well, we'll wait for After Effects to load it up. But this guy's going to leave, right, and then I... You know, I had to clip him out so that I can show up in front of him and sort of walk up to the table. Right, and I had to clip her hair out, too. Yeah. Sort of one mm-hmm. of the more complicated scenes. But, you know, for all the hard work, I think it uh, I think it makes it look pretty good. Oh. I'm just waiting for it to load, though. Yeah, you can see, the longer it takes to load, the uh, the more hard work was evident. Yeah, that's how you know. That's how you know. And, uh, yeah, I'm definitely struggling trying to carry four rifles with bayonets here. Um, I guess in-universe, the theory would be I'm just buying all this stuff, but it, it doesn't show up in the later clips, so I guess it's a little strange. You put it in your anime pocket dimension. Thing. Yeah, my uh, yeah. bottomless bag. Exactly. Right, then we get to Eye Shield, uh, a show we love. So I think it was hard to find a clip that I was going to be happy with. I think this was a good option, uh, right where they push the truck. And uh, this is this is Chuck's camera work. You can see I needed someone to hold the camera so I can get that top shot. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, that would be hard. tricky. And then you got to motion track yourself. Well, the truck moves. I had a lot of trouble with the frame rates on this. Like, I would do something in After Effects, and then I would look at it in Premiere, and it would, like, something would be wrong about the frame rates, so the things I cut out would show up in, like, an earlier frame or a later frame. It would look all busted. Oh, so yeah. Mm-hmm. I did do this in After Effects and then exported it out and put it in, in Premiere. Uh, that day was extremely hot so this is real sweat uh it was very hot in the studio that day which i mean is true to the scene but yeah method yeah Mm -hmm. 
And uh, this scene uh, actually is more. Usually the coach the coach here was center screen, but I, I shifted him to to the right a little bit, Make just so I could get yeah more of me in there. And then I put some of the blue from the sky up in the corner here. Uh, yeah, and you can okay. see if you zoom in, sort of the edge of that. Yeah, I do. Which, you know, I live but with I don't. It. I, I, you know, I wasn't when I when you didn't point it out, I couldn't see it. Right. I, I guess it's my job here to point out all the all the various mistakes. Right. So I'm looking at the clock, you know, and then we got Santa running along, kicking a rock, and then I like the idea that he hits me with the rock. I think it's a little hard to to see because the rock is so small. Um, and we wait for that to come up here. But I actually, there's like a shot of the rock later on. So I cut a picture of that rock out, and then I, I moved it in After Effects so it would appear to hit my head. Ah, okay. Really went for it. Yeah, well, I, I figured the scene needed a little bit more. I mean, you could probably cut it here-ish. Yeah. Um... I like Ice Shield so much. I, I feel like we would, we would do it dirty if we only kept it for a few seconds. <laughs> yeah. Right, so let me see if I can get that rock show up. Yeah, see, one of the things, if, 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 you, do the, if you do the linking, it has to magically load it on the end. Okay, well, you can watch the video if you'd like to see the rock in my head. Uh, one of the other things about this is I added in the sort of that that muscle muscle contraction characters heads get when they get angry sort of the red oh yeah yeah squiggly lines which I wanted to convey more so that something that had happened than just a rock hitting me I guess that's a little weird because I'm sort of breaking my own rules right if everything that interacts with me becomes live action sort of funky that I then have anime anime bits on me but yeah you know it it's tough yeah tough creative tr decisions you had to kind of work through yeah I think I generally defaulted to picking just what looked good in that one scene and not not relying too much on the internal logic of things yeah and Similar to the, the Freedom Project stuff, you can see I like the character reactions to what happened to me. So that's why we kept sending this one shot here. Yeah, you're employing some cooler shot stuff. So we're at 238 of a five-minute video. So this is the intermission. And Mr. Scahill, would you be excited to know yeah. that this retrospective yeah. is sponsored? Oh? That's right. This retrospective has been brought to you by the podcast, What the Hell Happened to Them? What? Yeah. That's my podcast. It's a hit oh. podcast. <laughs> it is. If you'd like to follow the film careers of Adam Sandler, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Julia Roberts, or, just announced, Jack Nicholson, tune over to What the Hell Happened to Them with Patrick Scale. Available at all major podcast providers. Is it available on minor podcast providers or just the major ones? Yep. Yep, a bunch of ones I've never heard of were on there. Uh, I occasionally am on there, too. So if you uh, would like to hear my voice and Mr. Scahill's voice more, you should tune in. All right, and we're back from the intermission. Uh, hopefully you stayed with us. If you've gone, that's upsetting, but I understand. Uh, we move on to, to Bunny Girl. The, the full name of this is... I have it in my notes. Oh, no, I just called it Bunny Girl. It's like... <laughs> oh, Bunny Girl Senpai Doesn't Want to Be Noticed. That is an interesting title. Yeah. I'm going to put the title up right here on the screen, and hopefully I remember to do that. Um... I like this scene a lot because I can put myself sort of small in the background, but... Oh, uh, yeah, there you are. Little yeah. Where's Waldo? And uh, if you look on the sort of the larger shot, I I did spend the time to put myself in, but I'm practically... Oh, noticed. yeah, there you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, right? Two windows from the... Mm, excuse me. 
And then Bunny Girl uh, slaps this guy, right? And I get to show because he show noticed her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like boom, boom, boom. I really like how that that turned out. Then we got Sherlock Hound. Uh, this I think was the hardest one to do, just because sort of there's like a lot of timing going on, right? Where I get trapped in this cave along with Sherlock Hound, and I sort of have to, you know, I have to. Uh, I didn't, like, quite get the timing right, but, like, I have to walk, right? You can see I'm reacting just, like, a hair before that thing slaps down. Although, sort of similar to watch. Yeah, I don't know. I could buy it as you're looking around. Like, what is this place? Yeah, and then, yeah, you know, I'm just noticing the frame shakes, but I don't shake. That's kind of annoying. Yeah. Like I said, I'm definitely going to find things that... Yeah, <laughs> Uh, right, right. so I have to look at the door closing, and then I have to come around. I don't quite make it coming around. The the front closes. Right, and then you get stuck in this... Um, right, I'm stuck in this cave, and the walls are closing in. And I need to react to that. Right, I don't quite think I captured uh, concern yeah. here, but... <laughs> you kind of, huh, I see these walls are closing <laughs> in. Sort of a calm concern. Right, and then, then I have to sort of ho- push against a wall that's not there. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, right? And then, then I have to, you know, so uh, you had to, you got to oh, yeah, move yeah. your person with the camera, mm-hmm. right? Then stop, and then the you need to move again as the yeah. wall moves, which is <laughs> tricky. Yeah. Um, and again, I I said I like to put characters in front of me, but if Watson was in front of me, he was going to cover me, so. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, it's also kind of difficult to contr- portray what is actually happening here. Like you got to notice this the escape hole and then yeah. He's going up, but didn't quite a lot capture of, the, a lot of drama you have in it, your movie yeah. now. Yeah. And it won't be the first time there's drama. Right? So I'm I'm pushing up and then uh then the camera goes up. That was tricky to do, right? Cuz I have to fall away. And it's pretty much over, right? Uh, no, I just take it back. <laughs> and then I had to... Well, yeah, they, they got to save the day still. You're still trapped. Right. It's it's definitely was hard to get the... Right, because this hand has to move with this wall. Yeah. And if you notice this camera shot, that's not straight on. It's like 20 degrees looking up to me. Yeah, it's got a cant. Yeah. And that's tricky, right? Uh, but luckily we get saved, so, you know. Yeah, you should have used your little clicker to, like, peace out. You know, I... Yeah, this, I guess, goes back to the over overarching theme where it's it should be cool in the moment, but not necessarily logically consistent. Because in other <laughs> scenes, I do click out when I'm in danger. Yeah. I guess once... Well, but it would have made you look pretty heartless where you're like, well, you guys are boned and <laughs> I'm leaving. Yeah, but I do do exactly that coming up, so... Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, you, know, you can't go to the well too many times. Right. Uh, Girls Last Tour. Great show. Great, great manga, too. Um, you know, I had to blur myself a little because they're in the background, but I still come yeah. out as pretty, pretty blue. I guess maybe I should have, like, washed yeah, it's just the Yeah, it's just the color design. That would have been a good choice. Uh, but I like how the can falls in front of me. I think that's a good effect. Yeah. And then then we go to them shooting. Right? And I actually for this this scene I I counted out the seconds that it took for them to shoot. Like she shoots and then I jump and then you count 3 seconds and then she'll she'll chamber another round and then I dodge the round. It's it's kind of a little subtle to see. <laughs> Let me go. I think it might be better if I show this just in After Effects. Maybe? It's a live demo, folks. It's a live demo. All your tech questions are answered today. <laughs> yeah, so I like definitely timed it out so that it would look good. And I, I think if you see it, you know, it, it rewards close inspection. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it might not be immediately apparent. 
uh, on first viewing. And I have to try and remember what the After Effects, uh, like how do I zoom out? <laughs> Uh, see, this is this is what often happens in After Effects. I click further down somewhere, and then it it'll uh, see, and then I misclick, and then I'll start calculating all the brushes that takes up to there. But it's a good yeah, chance to show. It's just being a noob. Mm. Yeah, an After Effects nub. After Effects nub. This is this is good pod right here. <laughs> Watching I would think the rubber so. brushes calculate. Oh yeah. I mean, Give I do me want to show the green screen settings I use, too, but... Yeah, a good example of how my robe is falling apart. Uh, this tear right here, and... Oh, yeah. This patch right here, which I had my mom sew on. Uh, no, that's not it. It's the thing right above it. Oh, no, let's see that zooms in. Oh, uh, let's see. Right, so here... I am sitting. Yeah, so here's the here's the key light settings I used. Generally, I found if I run up the clip black, it basically gets rid of all the issues. So <laughs> that would be my advice to young aspiring <laughs> after nascent filmmakers. Yeah. Right. So she. Oh, I regret it. I regret everything. Right. So she takes it around out and you can see I, I slightly dodge it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, look at very that. Very cool. Yeah, that was definitely worth a trip in After Effects. Anyhow. <laughs> so Love Girls Last Tour definitely had to be in here. Uh, then we get to Attack on Titan. Very popular. I think of the two shows it's probably Attack on Titan most popular, Pokemon second most popular. Everything else basically the distant past. What? No One Piece? No Naruto? None of that? I don't particularly care for those shows, despite their popularity. Okay, so it's the cross-section of things you like and popular. Yeah, I like Pokemon, and I okay. love Attack on Titan. I gotcha. Uh, for this one, I... Oh, I can play, the, I can play the, the sound effect right here. Yeah, I wanted to to have the music and then drop the the record sound effects, uh, just because I kind of find it funny that I, I jump into a universe that's under attack by a giant beast, a titan, be if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember what this titan's called. The giant titan. Anyhow, and I was able to use one of these nested sequences. I think I can. Right. Yeah. I double click into it. Yep. So there is a monster growl in there and some, some wind noises and some steam sound. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I would have used the anime audio, but there's um, there's voices over it, so it just wasn't ever going to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so I think it's a pretty funny sort of scene. Uh, and you have to change the audio, right, because if you go from... Is it Andy? Yeah. Yeah, it's not. Right, you're up close, and then you, you cut away. Right, the audio is going to change. So that was tricky to get Correct. right. But. Yep. Um, and you can see, right, I nope out. Boop. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. I like it. Uh, so we're done with that. And then we get probably the greatest anime of all time. My personal favorite, Legend of Galactic Heroes. Uh, this is another example of issues I had with the the frame rate. Right, some scenes would work, where I could cut things out, but some scenes would not. So I, you know, I did I would do the render out and then put in, put into Premiere. Um, you know, I actually had a little bit of a crash pad for this one, so when I fall. I could land on the pad. Uh, okay, okay. And then <clears throat> it's, you know, you you saw my studio size. It's, it's true. There's not a ton of space to crawl, <laughs> and it's a hard floor. So yeah, that was a tricky shot to get. And you can see, um, it's kind of difficult to cut small stuff like this. So Very you can true. sort of see the characters, kind of outline. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of being so far away. And you 
kind of sell it anyway. And I had to do some some motion capture on this, right? Because you can see the frame. It's bouncing the frame is jiggling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like the idea of crawling behind the chair. Oh, I think that's pretty funny. Yeah. And then I pop out from behind the chair later on. Um, yeah, I think that's cool, yeah. too. <laughs> right, and then the ship almost gets destroyed, but we get saves. You know, Iron Shield Mueller comes to save the day. Uh, and then I pop up behind... I think that works. I think it's yeah. Fun. I think it all does. Uh, just a quick hit with Angelic Layer here, a, a clamp manga turned into anime. Uh, my sister and I happen to particularly love Angelic Layer, and sadly forgotten. I want to say it's an early two thousand show, but maybe it was from the late nineties. Uh, basically, they fight these little these little dolls in like arenas. Uh, it's cool. I like the idea of me in the crowd. Yeah, <laughs> you're cheering it on. Then uh, it's it's your boy. It's oh, your it's boy cla- this is a classic scene right here. You know, you've often expressed to me how how the anime fans of this era have forgotten Char Aznable. So I knew. Yeah. I knew he had to show up, and I I don't know how popular this particular scene is, but I think it's the only time they meet outside of their mobile suits. They do in the last uh, episode as well when they're fencing, but that's this is true. yeah right. the first time that they get to meet in person at all, and that's why part of why it's so famous. I think they fenced. Didn't they fence in like zero G too? Yeah, they fence on Solomon as it's being attacked. Yeah, the zero G sort of not in my budget. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not Solomon, silly. A Baoku, obviously. How could we forget? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I like the idea of me trying to help Amuro out of this ditch. I mean, it sort of makes sense that he'd have, I guess, I mean, it's a two-seater car, right? So he could yeah, he have, could have me a along the ride. Yeah. And then we look sort of dejectedly at the tire. <laughs> yeah, and then Char comes up. I I definitely wanted to show the scene of Char coming up, but it was a bit of a, a, bit of a struggle to, to figure out what I would do. Yeah. My right, Char shows up, and then we get... Amro's shock. I went with yeah, it. Yeah. Like and a good like, what's, luck. What, what's the big deal, dude? <laughs> yeah, I went with like a good luck pat on the back. Yeah. <laughs> I I tried experimenting with me just running away. Yeah. But it didn't look very good. So Yeah, that would be tough with your studio space. Yeah, but I mean, I could sort of flail my arms and like shrink shrink my character down a little bit. Yeah. As if I was running away. Uh, you know, I could probably get it to work, but it didn't look good when I was testing it. So, so Char Asimov showing up. I hope you're happy. I am. Oh, I'm always happy. Uh, Bubblegum Crisis Time. Great, great, great OVA series. Uh, not not great anime series, but <laughs> I like. Yeah. So this is again some tricky motion tracking, right? Because the camera goes down, but I I need to enter said bar. Right, and then I gotta be, I gotta walk in. Those are, I think, anytime I walk, it's just tricky. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I, I chase her out. Yeah, she's going after that bubble gum. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like this. It's cool how I come out of the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that took some effort. And then, I mean, this was tricky too, right? Because I run, I basically ran up to the green screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just missed her. Right, Sailor Moon makes a double appearance. This is from the. Pretty but now Guardian you got a twist on this one. Yeah, the Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon live action series, uh, which is uh, enjoyable. Not necessarily great, but uh, I like the twist of the live action. Again, I suppose it doesn't make a ton of logical sense, but uh, this shot. And the eye shield shot, I've actually upscaled a bit, just so it looked oh, a little better. Yeah, fit in with your timeline resolution. Yeah. Um, it's the problem with older products. Yeah. I The eye shield, I think, upscaled very well. This, I think, upscaled okay. Uh, but it's definitely an improvement. Ooh, wait, can I do the... I can't see... 
I think I... I definitely hid this video somehow. And I wonder how I can unhide it. See, it's a journey. I'm, we're, we're on a journey here as I try to remember what I did. Oh, isn't there just a... Oh, yeah, I can enable it, right? So that's the... It might show up hard on my screen share, but... That's the original, right? And that's the upscaled. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think it was worth worth the effort, but but uh, it's a subtle effect. <laughs> right, and then there's me just sort of shaking my finger because clearly that's not the, the real Sailor Moon. <laughs> and then we end on, on Galaxy Express. Uh, I had been watching Galaxy Express 999 at the time, and it's a, it's a decent show. And I liked the idea... I like the idea of ending on this because sort of these characters are always traveling through the universe and they're always leaving the people they find behind. Yeah. And I think it goes well with the music. It's sort of, I think a lot of films have probably ended on characters leaving on trains. So I, I think it speaks to that motif. And it's nice that I could find a lot of footage of a train and leaving. <laughs> Right, and we get one of these straight-on shots, and you can see there's one second left. And one of the issues here, I alluded to this earlier, but it's more evident here. The green screen reflects on this part of yeah. the metal. Yeah, so you can see how it was sort of rotoscoped out. And, you know, I could have done, I could have gone in and, like, kept this part of the frame unchanged. But then it's sort of just reflective green. Yeah. Which I think is a little bit worse. I don't know. I just sort of decided to live with it. Yeah, you probably made the right call. Right, they get on the train. I, I think there's a lot that works in this scene because it really does seem like they're interacting with me, right, because they turn to look. Yeah. And then I have to wave goodbye. I sort of limited on this shot because there's a character right behind me, you know, the <laughs> real character they're looking at. <laughs> so I sort of had to be sort of dead I center. I got you. Yeah. Right, and then... The train leaves. Yeah, all the train leaving stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I... Again, I'm limited, right, because the character is, like, right here. Yeah. I think the wave is okay. I don't know. It doesn't really seem like I'm into it, but... Yeah. <laughs> you just got to sell it with your face. Yeah. I mean, look at how sad he is that I'm going. Yeah. It's right, and then... And then it just goes up there. Yeah, and then we have... Right, the train's going, and then we freeze frame on it while I click. And I think, well, I mean, I can just show you what that looks like. Yeah, I wanted to have a sort of abrupt click out. Uh, I thought it would be kind of cool if I, like, if I shot myself here. Now, how would I say it? If I shot myself on the green screen and then I clicked out and was in my living room all in one shot, um, that was an alternative. But I I went with this because it was a little bit easier. And I don't <laughs> know if the alternative was necessarily better. That would have been a surprising amount of work to try to do that. Yeah. And I like, um, yeah, I like freezing on this shot. And then showing that shot, like, in in reality on the TV. Yeah. Yeah, and then it's just outro. I put the thing down. Boom, then we slide over and see the the Sailor Mercury pillow. The big reveal. <laughs> I think it's a, a funny way to end out. Um, we end out exactly five minutes. <laughs> uh, I no went, time for credits. <laughs> yeah, no time for credits. Two things about this shot that I like. One... Uh, one of the things I was really miffed about it was in April 15th we had a shot a similar shot of this chair and this table and I thought oh why didn't I put my AMV trophy there yeah it definitely should have been in a shot somewhere so I actually included that this time and the other thing was I had so much difficulty finding a good Sailor Mercury body pillow I remember that being a whole saga yeah like I could find good ones that were sold out and said they were going to come back in stock but they haven't come back in stock. Yeah, they never do. Yeah, yeah. And then all the other ones were like hentai level Sailor Mercury, which wasn't the vibe I was going for. Yeah. Although I suppose it'd be kind of funny if I blurred it out, but. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so I finally got this one, which I think is a little visually busy. I would have preferred just Sailor Mercury. Yeah. But, you know, it's a tough time. So I may do with what I had. Yeah, it's a rough economy these days, you know? <laughs> rough rough market for body pillows. Yeah, we can't we can't be picky here. Yeah, on the body pillow I ordered, either this thing is too long or the pillow is too short. It didn't, like, snug fit, you know? Anyhow, so that's the whole video. Uh, I'll say a little bit about the song. The song's Gloria from The Midnight. Um, I went through a lot of work trying to find songs. I wanted something sort of with an 80s vibe to it. I would say their songs are sort of 80s nostalgic, which is kind of a weird vibe to go for, I guess, because I wasn't alive in the 80s. Uh, but I think, you know, a lot of the anime I show is, is of that period. And I sort of, I liked the beat of this song. Um, and there were other songs with similar beats to them, but... Yeah, I just like Gloria the best. So that's why I went with this song. You you can see I'm not a, a particularly musically inclined individual. <laughs> I don't have much to say about it. So that's basically the whole thing. Uh, I don't know. What, I, I ordered the camera for this April 16th, and I started testing April 24th, and we recorded your thing June 7th. Okay. And I want to say I cut the last video. All right, so this is the project. I cut the last video. It would be RC3, February 17th. So Yeah, it was a long, long turnaround time for you. Yeah, I think with April 15th, it was just a lot of work. Yeah. Whereas this was sort of, you know, I'd spend one day finding a couple clips and then the next day, I would take notes on scenes I wanted to film. So I sort of broke it up a lot easier. Yeah, okay. And uh, so I think it was a lot less work. But I'm happy with how it turned out. I think it's 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 an odd duck, but I always wanted to do a sort of green screen AMV mashup. I think it's, uh, I think it's unique. I like how I've got a lot of anime that I'm sure no one... Yeah, <laughs> I think, you know, as the elder statesman of the anime community, it's our responsibility to to bring out classic anime. Um, I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? Does it, yeah, you does found it, some deep cups. I don't know a lot of these either. You should. I, as I said, I hope you were taking notes. Yeah. So <laughs> um, I don't know. What do you, do you What do you think? Do you like it? Did you? Yeah, I, uh, I'm impressed at the work that you put in. I think you have a fun little story here. Your clicking narrative device is, was employed effectively. Uh, has this screened yet? No, it's coming out Anime Boston. You can see it May 27th and yeah, the 28th. Right. And then it'll be on well, YouTube for all 22 of my subscribers. <laughs> I bet you'll get some big, big attention from that at the convention. You'll be a, a convention celebrity, perhaps. Truly, my 15 minutes of fame. Happened. And they'll all know you're the one who did it, because you're in it. <laughs> I think, yeah, you know, that is kind of interesting. Uh, I don't particularly like acting, so it's a little odd that two of these things have involved me substantially, but <laughs> I, I hope it inspires other people to put more live action in there. I think that's, an, that's a well that's not quite been dug at as much. I think it'd be really no. cool if people would mix live action in interesting ways. And it's a lot more doable now than it ever has been, so it, Which is, give it a shot. I mean, it's an excellent segue to look at some of the test footage. Briefly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the way I did this was I'd, sh I'd shoot a ton of like green screen footage, and then I'd go through, and the clips I actually used would end up in the, in the live action folder. So all my tests are in here. And you can see, right, so I used Space Runaway Ideon. And right, so there's a lot of, this was like the early lighting system, and you can see it just doesn't work. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, it's, like if you get bad gradation, 
Like, if you can't light that green up sort of in a uniform way. Evenly, yep. Yeah, that doesn't work. This is okay. You can see there's sort of... It might be hard to see in your end, but there's, like, little bits of gray on the edge. Yeah, the gray I'm not seeing. Yeah, the quality of the screen share has saved me in this case. <laughs> um, yeah, there's another bad shot. Yeah, I see the problems in this one. <laughs> yeah, there was... Yeah, you see, here I basically figured it out with the new lights. Um, and I I tried a lot of different settings on the camera and different... Um, you know, I tried in 4K and I tried in 1080p just to see what would be better. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad I figured it out at the end. Yeah, camera testing is a pretty strong part of every production, even ones where you're not really doing all that much. You just kind of want to know what to expect and plan for as you go into it. Yeah, so that's the retrospective. Uh, if you lasted to the end of the video, go ahead and uh, hit that dislike button to save people the, uh, <laughs> the pain. Uh, I've been Paul Germini. You can find more of my videos on this channel, which hopefully you're at. Uh, you can go to my blog, which will be linked here. And uh, I've been joined by Mr. Scahill. Mr. Scahill, where can they find more of your brand of commentary? Yes, yeah, so outside of podcasts, I also do features, documentaries, short films, animations, behind-the-scene footage, and that's all available at quixoticunited.com. I will put that in the show notes as well. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, so that's it. Uh, thanks, everybody. Goodbye. Bye.